The Predator franchise is brought back to the big screen by provocative writer-director Shane Black. So let's talk about it. When a Predator ship crash lands on Earth, a scientist, a group of unstable former soldiers, and a secret government agency try to track down the Predator and its technology before it's too late. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Sean Chandler, and I started this channel because I was driving everyone around me crazy talking about movies way too much. If you can relate to that, you're probably in the right place. And this weekend, I was looking to talk about The Predator because the original Predator is one of my favorite sci-fi action movies of all time. You can check out my review at right up here in this playlist. So naturally, The Predator was one of my most anticipated movies of 2018. And with that in mind, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the movie down below in the comment section. Tell me, did you love it? Did you hate it? Did it disappoint you? With that said, let's get started talking about the good. Probably the best thing about this movie is that it has the biggest story out of any of the Predator movies. Most of the films in the franchise have fairly contained stories about a group of people having to battle a Predator. The story here is much more expansive and it builds the mythology out quite a bit. You get an idea of what the Predator are doing, what drives them, kind of how their interworkings kind of work. Likewise, what humans know about them and all sorts of stuff like that. It's a much bigger story than we're used to in this franchise. The movie also has a very large cast of great actors playing these Shane Black characters that all of them have some punch, some bite, something distinct about all of them. In particular, our group of main characters, the Loonies, are a ton of fun. They've got some nice chemistry with one another. Also, Sterling K. Brown plays a great character that's very different from his character on This Is Us and he just disappears into it. He plays very naturally a character that's so different from what some of us are familiar seeing him do. Another great thing about this movie is that it is unashamedly rated R. It has just got the crass language from the loonies, graphic violence, gore, all the stuff that kind of I grew up watching these 80s and 90s rated R action movies. It is present in this movie and on display from beginning to end. And as an action movie and a Predator movie, it delivers on the action from the very beginning to the very end. It is kind of a nonstop stream of action sequences and Predator kills. You can see what's happening most of the time. It's not dimly lit. And so there's plenty of what you want from a Predator movie or a rated R action movie. From there, let's move on to the mixed. The big thing that comes to mind on the mixed aspects of this movie is that Shane Black went for some big, bold, risky ideas, and I can respect the fact that he did that and they kind of let him go in that direction at the same time being like, some of these ideas don't work so well. This movie introduces new mythology, the hybrids that they talk about in the trailer, a whole bunch of ideas, the, just the scope of the story. All these ideas are thrown out there. Some of them work, some of them are interesting, and some of them are kind of terrible. Next mixed aspect is the humor. Some of it definitely put a smile on my face. It made me laugh at times. There's some nice report times, and other times it's like, whoa, you are trying way too hard to put a joke here, and it doesn't work. There's also some humor in the movie that definitely pushes the line of just being wildly offensive, especially in light of the controversy surrounding the release of the movie and someone that Shane Black hired for the film that's a registered sex offender. These jokes definitely feel very uncomfortable as you're watching the film. From there, let's move on to the negative aspects of the movie. And the biggest problem with this movie is that it was very clearly reworked extensively in the editing room. It's fairly well documented that the movie went through extensive reshoots after after it was nearly complete. In fact, Edward James almost was cast in the movie, had a significant role, but they cut him out of the movie. And when he commented on it, he said that they had to trim 30 to 45 minutes out of the film to try and hit the runtime that they wanted. And that meant removing entire subplots. For example, the trailer shows some action sequences in the daylight that aren't in the movie at all and don't really fit into the timeline of the film that was released. If you're interested in what went on behind the scenes. There's a great article Screen Rant did. I've got it linked down below in the description. They walk you through kind of what happened, what the original movie was going to look like, and what changes were made and why. But suffice to say, this movie had reshoots and tinkering on the level of Justice League and Fantastic 
four. So as I go into my issues with the movie, a lot of this has to do with the fact that the movie was radically changed in post-production. But to go into my specific problems with the movie, the editing here is horrendous. Not necessarily usually in scene to scene sense, but in the overall flow of the movie, it feels very much like a two and a half hour movie that's been cut down to an hour and 50 minutes long because that's what you are watching. And so it just flies from plot line to plot line, action sequence to action sequence without pausing to breathe. And it's very difficult at times to figure out what's going on because it feels like pieces are being forced together that don't belong together. Likewise, the movie has serious issues with plot holes. Characters' motivations and kind of logic behind their actions are very unclear, especially in regards to the predators and the secret government agency. It it doesn't make a lot of sense why they're doing the things that they're doing based off the reveals that happen later in the movie. Likewise, this movie has some of the most serious passage of time issues I have ever ever seen in any movie. A lot of that going back to the reshoots and how much of the movie was edited out. The way the movie plays out, it feels like maybe 48 hours have passed, but other times it feels like great stretches of time have passed. Two things in particular happen that make absolutely no sense in light of the timeline of the film. One involving someone eating something and how it kind of comes back into play into the movie. Likewise, there's a line in the movie where someone says this mask was used on Halloween that makes no sense in light of the actual timeline of how the film plays out. All of this going back to the major issues on the production and them trying to salvage the film. And then there's just huge issues with coincidence and convenience in the story where characters just happen to be related to someone that's really important to something later on in the plot line or some item that might have been swallowed at one point in time just happens to come back right at the perfect moment in time in the script where everything just kind of comes together in ways that don't have any plot logic to them they just have to for the sake of the script. But with all that said, I certainly wasn't bored by the movie and I kind of had a lot of schlocky fun with it. But before I give you my final score, go ahead and tell me down below, what did you think about The Predator? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was a total train wreck or did you actually have a lot of fun with it? Also, after this video, check out this playlist up above of my best and most up-to-date rankings of some of those classic 80s and 90s sci-fi action franchises. But as for this movie, I gotta score it a C minus, one of the most disappointing movies of the year, but on an entertainment level, I would go with a seven out of 10. It's not a good movie, but it is a fun movie. If you like this review, remember to check out that playlist over there to the left or my other reviews of the Predator movies in that playlist to the left. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.